Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And boy, I hear a lot of people talking about this one. Yeah. It's about jobs and who's coming and who's going. Well, it's really talking about who's going yeah. and, and quite a bit. It's called the Great Resignation. Matt Thompson, who is an Oklahoma City native and grew up in Midwest City, uh, has been dealing with, with this for quite a while. He's an expert in this area and in recruiting and uh, acquisition for companies of talent and he's going to talk about what's causing people to uh, quit going to the office and start working from home and if that won't work just quit all together yeah so what are the trends we'll find out today matt thompson is our guest you're watching the verdict Right now, six feet can feel like a long ways away. But from six feet, we can still smile at each other. From our doorways and our stairways, from opposite sides of the street and opposite sides of the country, through fear and frustrations, we can remind each other that we are still here for each other because we can still smile at each other when we're not going anywhere. Military service ran in my blood, starting from my father, which joined the Navy, on the Chickasaw side, my uncle, which served in the United States Army. I'm Benjamin Espinosa, Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, and I'm Chickasaw. I went to the Secretary of Defense's staff at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., which ultimately led to becoming a combat support technician for Naval Special Warfare, specifically SEAL Team 10. I think to be proud and to love your tribe, to love being Chickasaw, you also have to love being American. You also have to love everything that America stands for. Equality, perseverance, professionalism, and power. I want my family to know that their father is a good person, but also feels that he has an obligation to the country and to love this nation. Anything worth having is worth dying for. The military and the country owes me nothing. I owe it everything. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at profilesofanation.com. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Well, as we talked about in the open, our guest today is Matt Thompson from uh, TSG, Thompson uh, Services Group. Uh, he is an expert uh, recruiter, talent acquisition person who has a real uh, finger on the pulse of the uh, job market in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma in general. Uh, he did, he's been in this business for 25 years, so he's not uh, new to what he's doing. He's been doing it a while and doing it very well. He has a number of major clients. Uh, they come and go, as all clients do, but there are, now he's working with Paycom. He's done work with Love's Country Stores and other firms that you'd recognize. We just won't run through the list, but it's a stellar uh, client list. Uh, he... Uh, <clears throat> does all kinds of business consulting from the standpoint of acquisition of employees. It could be anywhere from uh, an opera singer to a welder. And uh, he would uh, he know which is which, and he would uh, do a good job in getting the needs filled of the client. Uh, this is his first visit to the verdict. Matt, sure glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you both for having me. How'd you get started in this line of work? <laughs> organizational communications leadership like the program here and uh, was driving home and Jeep broke down and my family lives here so I stopped in Oklahoma City all of a sudden after graduating but I saw a position for a recruiting role with a local firm here that worked in the restaurant industry and I had worked a number of restaurant jobs in college so I said hey I've got I finished school let me go try that well I took to it pretty well and so uh, what that involved was me recruiting managers for companies around the country whatever market they were in. They could be in any of the 50 states, and so it was a pretty broad position. And uh, I just took to it, like I said, and that's what I started doing. So I've been doing that now for 25 years for a number of different companies. So what do you look for in your, when you're trying to elevate a person that's working at the restaurant into a management position? What, what's, the, what, what's the attribute that, that would 
make you remember that person? Well, definitely somebody who's on time, who's responsible, <laughs> who, who wants to yeah. be in that role. Uh, a number of people are tapped sometimes for positions they don't actually want. So I think having somebody who really has the want to, to be in charge and take on that responsibility and that accountability, that's the kind of person you're looking for. And that tears up all the way into the executive level roles I look for today for our CEOs here in town. Uh, they want people who are, have business acumen, who can lead people and train and develop people themselves, and also uh, are strategic mind th uh, thinking people. Uh, <clears throat> your <clears throat> resume mentioned that you did this work both internally and externally. What do you mean by that? Well, externally means uh, the term headhunter is used a lot, but third-party staffing agencies or recruiting firms were engaged with companies to go out and recruit people from one company to the other. So Amazon may call me to recruit somebody out of Google that does the same job at Google for them. And so I spend a lot of my time doing that. It's a very interesting and polite way to steal people from other <laughs> companies. But it's a very common role that's been around for a long time. And I actually didn't even know it was a thing until I finished school. And then from an internal perspective, at a certain point in the 2000s, they wanted to stop spending money on recruiting firms and bring it in-house. And so internal recruiting firms became a new division of a support role in a company. And my first role was with Love's Travel Stops, which is very interesting. And it was uh, one of the first times they had that role. And so I was in charge of recruiting for all the store operations around the United States and eventually led to roles for the trucking company, Gemini Motor Transport for Love's, and other divisions of the company as well, including derivative traders for the trading floor that we stood up. So it was very broad. Yeah, and with their growth pattern, that must have been a, a really a job that just never stopped. Yes, Tom Love is not known for being a slow <laughs> charger in any way. In fact, hard charger is the term. But it was great because it expanded the roles beyond the restaurant operations store management roles to uh, the derivative trader, which is a very unique hire where you're pulling from Chicago, New York, Virginia, where all the trading floors occur, and we were creating our own here and in Houston as well. Um, you fill roles in accounting, in finance, in marketing, in um, transportation. It just it becomes very broad. So the idea of learning all those different roles and how they all work together and when they're needed and how to go find them from other companies is a, is a, is a great skill that I'm glad I have now. How do you, <clears throat> what steps do you go through to actually find a person? Let's say somebody's looking for a controller for their company. Uh, what, how would you handle that request? What would you do? Well, one, I would make sure that the client knows that I'm probably going to be pretty direct and I'm going to find out who their top 10 competitors are and see who the controllers are at those companies and then politely ask them if they might be interested in uh, looking at another opportunity. And it just rolls from there. I could call 10 people, but only two people have interest. And it's a timing issue. It's as much a compensation is always a part of the conversation. So you're always going to discuss that at some point. But ultimately, people, and it leads into our conversation about the great resignation, people are not just looking for the financial rewards of a position. They're looking for the opportunity to advance, which is a very big conversation today. They're looking for the opportunity to uh, learn new things and be trained and developed by that company. And so companies are really trying to compete that way. But I would be very direct. The term headhunter is applied well in what mm -hmm. I do. Um, and it's not really about posting a job. A lot of the positions I work on are not posted. They're actually very confidential searches, and they have to be for a number of reasons because of the executive level of the candidate. You've, you've been in the business long <clears throat> enough to have seen a change in how you reach um, a, a potential job candidate. In other words, it used to be you just put in something in the one ads of the, of the big newspaper in that right. metropolitan city, and then that evolved and has never stopped evolving. Can you kind of take us through that evolution of, from the one ads in the, print, in the printed newspaper to where we are today? And that's such a great question because source effectiveness, which is the exact metric we use in that, in that work, deals with all the different ways we get a candidate, from employee referrals to using online job boards like everybody knows about, LinkedIn, LinkedIn indeed. But Google for Jobs has become a significant player, and the term Google SEO or Google Analytics is where I spend a lot of my time in the upstream recruitment marketing work figuring out how to make sure that these jobs are indexed properly. So when you search for a job, you're on page one, because most people know you don't go to page two ever. If you don't find it on page one, you're going to research the position. And so we want to try to be ranked. And so I'll, I will spend a lot of my time on the recruitment marketing side working on that budget, how to spend that money properly, and it's very much a, a, a digital marketing role. One of the things we wanted to talk to you about, besides what we've been talking about, is this term, the great resignation. What is that? What does it mean? 
what can you tell us about it as, a, as an opener? Perfect. So the Great Resignation was a, t uh, a term coined in Q1 of, of 2021, and it was developed by Dr. Anthony Klaus, who's down at Texas A&M in their business school, Mays Business School. And his focus in, he teaches business management, but also organizational leadership, uh, organizational development, and one of his research topics is the resignation and how people resign from companies. So he spent, he, has, he had a lot of data on this before. And what he found is that trending before the COVID uh, enjoyment we experienced over the last two years, there was a trend line starting around 2011, 2012, where resignations were going up at a pretty high rate. And so they actually trended all the way up until December of this last year, where they maxed out at about 4.5 million. We had 4.4 million in January and 4.3 million in February. So there was a, uh, his paper was all around that, and he actually got uh, asked to do an interview with Business Week, and when it hit online, it went viral quickly. In fact, I found it on LinkedIn and reached out to him that week to introduce myself and kind of ask him some questions, as everybody has been doing lately. Mm -hmm. He gets interviewed quite a bit, but that's how that derived. And it's a very uh, intuitive look and objective, data-driven look at what's really happening in the workplace. Well, uh, reach down into that data. What's the takeaway there? Well, so we started seeing trends in the late 2000s, early 2010, 2011 era because of technology companies, and they were expanding all over the country. and their trendiness in a workplace environment, you know, having your pets on site. Uh, we saw it in Chesapeake here in Oklahoma City where they would have dentist office and restaurants and all that. There was a, a growing trend to have those kind of amenities with jobs. So people started leaving positions more for the amenities than they did for even money. But then it also has developed into a generational issue where Gen Y, millennials, and the newer generations are looking for more uh, work-life balance in their, in their life. What is our company doing philanthropically? That's been a, a conversation for a while, and so that's driven a lot of changes as well. You're also seeing a generation of Gen X, Gen Yers realizing that, you know, especially in the last years, which validated the previous seven, is that you really can work from home. You really can work from a hallway on your phone. The technology is there, the capabilities are there. And so that has driven a lot of what would be normal white collar positions especially, the ability to not have to, to work in an office. And so people are looking for those kind of jobs. I think we're about... Let's get to a break. <clears throat> Out of Matt Thompson is our guest. We're talking about uh, jobs and the hiring process and HR issues, and we'll get to it in uh, more depth when we return. One of the best kept secrets about the post 9-11 GI Bill benefit is that it can be used at a trade school or a technical school and it doesn't have to be used at a university or college. These are benefits that the veterans have earned through their service and they should take advantage of it. Veterans really need to understand that there are many resources offered by the Oklahoma Department of Veteran Affairs. They are there to help you find the right school for you. The school that will help you and your family make great steps into your future. OU Law has a history and heritage that are unparalleled. At the University of Oklahoma College of Law, we empower our students to pursue the career of their dreams. We have the highest U.S. news ranking ever achieved by an Oklahoma law school. We are the first law school in the country to launch a college-wide digital initiative. And this year, our competition teams rank number two in the nation. OU Law, generations of excellence, limitless possibilities. We're back on The Verdict. Our guest is Matt Thompson. He knows all about hiring people and why people tend to leave one job and take on another. Have we ever discussed why we haven't left this job in 22 years? <laughs> no one else will hire us. <laughs> well, that's, that's right. That's Nobody right. wants it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Matt, you used some numbers that I wanted to clarify. You used uh, 4.5 million uh, jobs or people 
that is a monthly figure or an annual figure, or what is that? Yes, that's a monthly figure, and it trended up and plateaued at the 4.5 in December of 2021, and that's benchmarked against around 11 to 11.3 million open jobs that are online and available to the marketplace, something that all employers are feeling today is, I've got plenty of jobs available, but I don't seem to have anybody applying for those jobs. So just to, to take it one step farther, uh, what we're saying is that in that particular month, there, there were 4.5 million people left the workforce by resigning or whatever, yeah. uh, and there were, at approximately the same time, over 11 million openings where, where folks are looking to fill slots. Right. So people aren't going out of the marketplace uh, because there are not jobs available. It's because there are not jobs available that they want to do. That's exactly right. And, and that goes back into the questions around what are the benefits of working. Um, it used to be that the number one question I would get asked is, what is your benefits package? What's your vacation right. plan? What's your PTO time off? Um, in some cases, in the bigger metropolitan areas, what's my drive time to work? Well, the last couple of years have definitely affected how people think about sitting in a car waiting to go to an office where only half the, the population is showing up. And you'll see a lot of companies like Adobe is known for this. They've closed down multiple offices on the West Coast and allowed work from home eternally. So has Amazon. And you're seeing that in Oklahoma City as well. So when we talk about the number of openings we have, and a number of those openings very clearly were reopened as many jobs were frozen during the budget budget process of 2020, as we went into uh, 19 to 2020, in the first quarter, people started freezing jobs because nobody knew what was going to go on. I mean, it was new for everybody. So you see a lot of jobs get frozen and then reopen as things start to loosen up. So part of that uh, 11.3 million jobs are reopening of jobs that were already budgeted and approved, but nobody knew how they were going to fill them. And then the others are new mm -hmm. organic growth for market share. And this is, I'm getting into the budgetary side of things, but that's a big conversation. And so people were looking for those opportunities that were going to fit more with the new trending of the lifestyle of being able to work from home and work remote. That conversation has been around a lot longer than the last two years. It just got further enhanced and confirmed that it can happen over the last two years. So the, the theory is <laughs> that during COVID, people had a lot of time to contemplate and they started reprioritizing and they were placing a higher value on what's the quality of my life you know what's my what's my well-being factor mm -hmm. and they realized you know i don't like my job i don't want to go back I, I mean is 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 that some of what you're seeing or has that been overblown no i think that's very spot on to what you're seeing is people are realizing that there are jobs that are out there that allow them to see their kids off at school instead of waiting in traffic to drive to, to work and then they work from home and then they can take a dentist appointment there's no need to work around a work schedule at the office. And it, work has become much more nimble, much more nimble. And so people are wanting that as a lifestyle. And there's a, they're also calling, there's a new term that's been coined just over the last four months called the great rethink. Is rethinking how we're getting to our career. Do I really want to work that much and not see my family? And you'll see the stories online a lot, especially on LinkedIn, about people saying, look at how I got to go to my daughter's recital in the middle of the day because I work from home and I can do it and they know I'm going to do my work later. So it's definitely the great rethink is a great way to phrase but it. But there are employers that would say, okay, but how do I, how do I gauge productivity? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, how do I know what my employees are doing? So what, how does that fit into this equation? Because certainly it's got to. That's definitely a conversation. And you know there are objective ways to measure work using strict login codes and how long you're logged in. But not a lot of people that you just described want to be micromanaged either, either at the office or at their home office or their remote office. So I, I think a lot of the term, using the term, I'm going to be adulting now, which means I'm going to get my work <laughs> and I'm going to do my work. And if I don't do my work, hold me accountable. And if I do my work, then great, let me keep doing my work this way. And, and that's what we're seeing a lot more. When Devin went uh, alternative work schedule, there was talk about how there was a 10% reduction in productivity, but nobody could really tell us the measure of what that was. That was just the executive perception. And the companies who are engaging more into the nimbleness of work are seeing less, more retention of employees, more uh, employees referring people to them so they get more applicants and they're just doing a better job. So whoever engages in the work from home, flexible work schedule and so on are going to be more successful. 
I guess this is <clears throat> just another form of what has been happening in the marketplace or the workplace for a long time. And early on, a hundred years ago, I, everybody had to have a private office with paneled walls and you couldn't see in, you couldn't see out, no matter about uh, not have windows. And then everybody had to have windows in their office and the offices were glass and uh, no, no obstructions of view at all. And this is just another way to configure the office. Yeah, and, and work has evolved, right? The office is remote. You know? yeah. You'll see people all the time sharing pictures of, I'm at the beach doing mm -hmm. my job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and there, there are great stories of people going on boat tours and yacht tours or uh, traveling around the world while they work. Uh, like I said, I was having a call with somebody who it was in Britain probably last week, and they're in Liechtenstein this week. Um, the, the, the remote aspect of work, and it's a fun fact, LinkedIn now changes, has changed how their jobs are delivered and posted to where you have to categorize them as on-site premise work versus mm -hmm. flexible work schedule versus work from home. And that's how people search for jobs now. Well, and there's this growing tendency toward you know, moving away from being rigid. In other words, you know, at one time it was every employee gets this amount of vacation, this amount of time off, and everybody's the same. And, and I think now there's this, this wanting from the workforce of, well, I, I want this and I want that, and that's not important to me. And, and mm -hmm. it's almost like they want an individual work arrangement with their, with their boss. And I would think from your standpoint, that's got to be a little more time consuming to try and figure that out. Uh, if, it, if everything was rigid, your job might be a little easier. No, that's a great perception of the conversation with the candidate is, what is exactly going to make you tick or make trigger you to look at another opportunity? And it's not, some people are looking for other opportunity at a lateral compensation level just for a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. That's been a pretty common conversation over the last 10 years. This just further develops that and it evolves how people make their offers and it does make very custom offer conversations happen. Uh, I know that you represent folks like Loves and Paycom and, and the like. Uh, do you also, on the other hand, and those are people looking right. for people, do you also, on the other hand, represent individuals that are looking and need individual help getting a job? That is exactly right. I've had a local CIO reach out to me just this morning, uh, letting me know his company is being bought and he wants to transition, so I'm going to take him through that process. And if I have an opportunity that aligns, I'll help drive that. I had another young man who, uh, you know, I'm coaching and he's a younger uh, recruiting level and recruiters are in very big demand right now by the way huh. and he is looking at there's recruiting for recruiters recruiting so. for recruiters I've never thought I would say it I'll be honest <laughs> it's a definite thing but he is looking at a thirty to forty thousand dollar increase to change jobs today hmm. and he's a young man so that's that's a significant thing and and it, again it's not always about money he's also looking for the 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 ability to be invigorated at work you know he's he he's not a job hopper and but he's looking for that next opportunity that's going to help him grow in advance. And yes, the money is definitely not a, a deterrent, for sure. We've only got about 45 seconds. What's the future hold? What's the, what's the trends that you're seeing right now? Perfect. So trends we're seeing is that it's plateauing. So we're not seeing as many people leave. Things are kind of settling. That's kind of the feel we have of that. But we are going to see a difference in how companies are deciding what positions to open, how they're deciding what buildings to build or buildings to rent to put in office space because they're realizing they don't need it as much yeah. and how they're using technology to manage that work. And I think we'll see a lot of that happening. I can tell you this, it's a good time to be a candidate. So if you're a candidate out there, you should probably take a call or two. It might be worth your time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Matt Thompson's our guest. Fascinating subject, Matt. Thanks for your success. Yeah, thank you and, so much. And uh, getting our viewers up to date on the, on the current trends and uh, the employee-employer relationship. Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back. It used to be okay in hospitals. It used to be okay in movie theaters. It was okay in classrooms, restaurants, and airplanes. But thanks to a greater understanding of the dangers, that's not okay anymore. So now that we know secondhand smoke causes lifelong health problems, why is it still okay to smoke with children in the car? Bottom line, it's not okay. Let's get serious about protecting kids. Join the fight at StopsWithMe.com.
All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. You have uh, uh, children coming from a different lifestyle, different mindset. You have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we try to do with these kids. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Well, I, I think we've all heard stories about people leaving their job because they want to work from home or they want to have a different work-life balance. And Matt was really good, I think, about filling in some of the blanks there. Well, he was indeed, and I think there was a popular misconception that the primary moving factor in that was COVID. According to Matt, while it did contribute, it was not the primary factor. It was going on before, and it's going on still today. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you know, you've got, well, I'll call them old school employers who still expect their person to be in the job, in the office, if not behind the typewriter, behind their, their computer keyboard. Punching the time card. <laughs> Punching the time card. How can I forget the time card? <laughs> uh, and then you've got, you know, you've got others who are, you know, less rigid and are yeah. willing to, to discuss it. And, and, you know, Matt's got a tough job because he's, he's probably got clients that are, that are involved in both of those. You can get more information uh, from Matt at his website, tsgrecruiting.com, tsgrecruiting.com. We've got a website, theverdict.tv, and we'll see you next week.